Welcome to another light reading telecom innovator video where we're introducing some of the people and companies that are moving the global communications industry forward. This is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor at Light Reading, and I'm joined on the presentation today by uh, Sachin Kati from VMware and also the uh, chair of the ORAN Alliance. Hi, Sachin. How are you? Doing well, Phil. Thank you. Thanks for uh, making the time today. I do appreciate uh, uh, that that we're all busy people, and uh, and especially you with uh, as as much as you have going on. Um, I, I did want to talk a little bit about um, you know the evolution of the radio access network, the RAN, um, uh, and and what's what's happening there, especially as we're moving to five G and beyond. Um, I guess a good place to start is to sort of center us in terms of. Uh, uh, you know where the where the RAN evolution is at the moment as we get to five G networks. So it's obviously becoming more software centric. Um, wh what kind of uh, what changes as the RAN becomes more software centric and and starts to look a little more like the other networking pieces that we see uh, in, in the telecom infrastructure. Yeah, no, it's a great time to be uh, working in the RAN domain. Uh, as uh, the rest of the network has evolved, and I think the way I'd characterize the transformation of the rest of the network is going from a virtualized infrastructure to a telco cloud infrastructure. Uh, the similar transition, uh, or in fact, RAN is keeping ahead from virtualization to essentially having a telco cloud as the underlying platform uh, for the RAN. And so what does that mean? So we have talked a long time about virtualization, but what that has really meant is a single server running in a virtualized form, running a network function. Mm -hmm. But we haven't really talked about a cloud that is spanning uh, the, the edge of the network, the access network, and essentially thinking about the RAN as uh, quote-unquote applications, right? the network functions that represent the RAN for 5G as uh, quote-unquote applications that are deployed on a cloud and managed and orchestrated in a cloud-native manner. So I think that's the big transformation that I'm beginning to see happen in the RAN. And this is even for, if you will, traditional RAN, which does not have all the open interfaces uh, that ORAN proposes, and def definitely with ORAN, uh, which wants not just cloudification, but also opening up of a lot of these interfaces so you get a lot more programmability. So cloudification of the RAN is a central theme uh, that is going to happen, I think, much sooner uh, than the rest of the programmability that uh, ORAN is proposing. Yeah, I want to pick up on a couple of points there. But first, I want to uh, maybe ask, is, is it an oversimplification to say that something like the RAN is just, be is it becoming kind of an application in the cloud? Is, is, is that what cloudification means? Yeah, I think that's a that's a first order good approximation of what's happening. Uh, but I think w that undersells uh, what that really implies uh, for the RAN, right? And what I mean by that is, if you think about the RAN, I think the picture you should have in your head is thousands of little data centers. So you might put a server mm -hmm. at the bottom of the cell tower. You might put the you might put a few servers at a central office, and a, a big carrier like AT and T or Verizon probably has thousand to 10,000 of these spread around the country, right? right? So you basically, the picture you should have is that, as I said, thousands of little clouds or little data centers, and really this distributed cloud that you're trying to build to run the run on top of is how do I make that look like one logical telco cloud rather than a right. thousand different instances an operator has to deploy and manage. And so really that's the transformation that's happening where you can think of this whole fabric as one logical cloud and the RAN becomes an application that's running on top of this that is managed uh, using cloud native software. And what advantage does that bring to the service provider when they, when they achieve this uh, ability to kind of um, unite all of these little data centers and, and is it, is it, is it the way that they can kind of um, account for resources and and sort of um, you know then I guess everything becomes this big computing and and storage fabric as opposed to you know each little discrete area uh, running by itself. Did I just answer my own question? I, I've, you, you, I've... you kind of did. <laughs> you kind of did. But to add to that, uh, I'd say I think it gives them a consistent infrastructure, whether it's the core or the edge or the RAM, right? So uh, right. they, they yeah. get a consistent infrastructure 
they get uh, a decoupling of hardware and software. So that de-risks their supply chain. They can source mm-hmm. general purpose hardware from a variety of vendors and they, they can source software from a different set of vendors. So you don't not, not tie to one vendor. And I think in general, uh, you get all the benefits of a cloud, which is you can use that same underlying infrastructure for multiple things. So as uh, operators deploy edge clouds, and edge computing applications, that same cloud that you're deploying for the RAN, the resources can also be used for edge computing applications when it makes sense. So a lot of the benefits uh, that you'd expect from a cloud uh, story. Yeah, that, 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 th- thanks for uh, clarifying that. I, I wanna clarify another point too, just because it, it's something that, you know, depending on um, uh, who's watching this, they may or may not be familiar with the, the term telco cloud as a differentiator from, you know, from what we've grown to know as the cloud. Um, what's what's your take on sort of how the telco cloud is different or what characteristics it has that makes it um, a, a little bit different than like the, the, the general sort of consumer cloud that we're used to? Sure. So at the telco cloud is really built to handle telco workloads, right? And so what are mm-hmm. telco workloads? Telco workloads are about uh, communication, are about connecting all of these mobile devices to the internet and they're delivering 4G and 5G services to you. So these are mission critical services. You rely on them for 911 calls. You rely on them for critical communication. So these workloads uh, come with uh, pretty stringent requirements on the kind of performance, uh, latency, the SLA, the availability you need to have from your cloud infrastructure. So historically, what this has implied, and this is uh, true, is that uh, the telco cloud is deployed as a private cloud that the telco uh, manages, right? And the other big difference is unlike the cloud as you think of in AWS and Google, which might be maybe uh, three or four big giant data centers around the country, the telco cloud as we just talked about is a thousand to 10,000 different data centers around the country. So it's a highly distributed problem uh, that telcos have to deal with. So that's really the difference, the kind of performance someone needs to deliver out of a telco cloud and the highly distributed nature of such a cloud deployment. And how does the, the you know, as we're talking about the RAN and how it becomes part of the telco cloud, um, what advantage does that, or, or I guess, how do we achieve more programmability? Because that seems to be the the, the key aspect to making these um, making these network components behave, you know, in a more flexible way, and also to adjust to the kind of changing use cases and and uh, network demands that are happening. Um, you know, I know we've we've talked a lot about, you know the changing use cases in the pandemic, but it's like, there's, there's a bunch of different things that are happening now where we've got the pandemic, we've got 5g coming online and new devices, and we've got a, a, an accelerated use of IOT. And I just think, you know, it, se- it seems like programmability at the RAN is going to be uh, uh, really important. I, I guess my question is um, uh, how, how do we, how do we get the RAN to become more programmable? What what technically needs to happen? So uh, the cloudification is kind of the first step, but not the last step, right? So once okay. you have deployed, a, made the RAN more of a cloud story and you're deploying RAN as software rather than as hardware appliances, uh, you get the first big benefit, which is now upgrading or adding programmability to a network element becomes a software upgrade rather than a wholesale hardware upgrade, right? So without that, once you deploy something, you're stuck with it, which is what has happened in the past. You couldn't really change anything. So I think the second aspect is really where ORAN is coming in in a big way, which is how do I now deconstruct these big black boxes that the RAN network function used to look like into more modular elements with open interfaces between them. And those open interfaces are going to be the key to programmability. So here, for example, in this case, uh, we are looking at uh, things like the RAN controller that the ORAN is uh, proposing and what are the APIs that uh, the underlying network functions and the network will expose. And so my vision is how do you build essentially for lack of a simple term, an analogy would be a Twilio for 5G, right? So Twilio oh, okay. is a bunch of APIs to program right. voice and SMS. What is the equivalent of Twilio for 5G? I think that's really where the world needs to get to, to really take advantage of all of these advances 5G is getting to, because you need to make these programmability accessible in a developer-friendly manner. Right. And that's the, this is where this gets exciting, because the as the networks kind of converge in this way, 
you know, the, the, the enterprise and sort of the traditional networking world has always had a, a much, um, I would say more, uh, a prosperous relationship with with developers, application developers, than the telco side has. Telcos have always found it really difficult to get people to develop applications specifically for their networks. Um, that does you know does adopting a more open infrastructure help that along and kind of make that more of a reality for telcos? Yeah, I think an open infrastructure at least reduces friction for developers to be able to program, right? Historically, it has not even been able... I mean, programming a network today means a month-long process of calling up someone, provisioning something, and getting the QCI deployed, right? Uh, Which no developer is going to do, right? Because dealing with a big big organization for a single developer is not going to happen. So how do you reduce the friction for someone to be able to just make an API call and get us kind of service provision in the network. That's where you want to get to. And so these open interfaces are step one. I think the second layer after those open interfaces is someone building a software platform that actually converts it into a developer-friendly API, kind of like what has happened in the cloud. And I think that's uh, really, for example, uh, where VMware is working on, and there's a bunch of others uh, that are thinking about uh, uh, what are these software platforms. Yeah, you know, I, I was actually my next question was going to be how does VMware fit into this, and you know, because it, it would it would be silly not to ask at this point, you know, how, what 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 work VMware is doing in this area, and uh, and how it's helping telcos to kind of get closer to um, you know uh, the cloudification of the RAN. Yeah, so I think VMware is almost coming at it from the top down. And what I mean by that is that VMware historically has been an enterprise company. They have a lot of enterprise customers and they understand what the enterprise needs are, right? What are the enterprise applications needs? And so really coming at it from this pers- that perspective and saying, what do we need to expose from the telco 5G network to the enterprise applications such that it's the mobile network is not just a consumer network, which is largely what it is today, but it also becomes an enterprise network. And so what are the APIs you need to do? So VMware is investing a lot in building platforms that give visibility to enterprise applications from the underlying network that allow enterprise applications to program the network uh, for the 5G network in a manner that gives them SLAs and uh, more better application layer performance uh, for things that you care about. And this is especially important in this new world where everyone's working from home. So you're now, like we are on Zoom from home, we are taking a lot of important meetings on video. Uh, we are hand- handling a lot of work-related applications from, from the home, which many of us may be even doing over a 4G or 5G network. So how do you deliver that same a uh, level of application experience that workers are used to getting inside the office, but when they're remote, right? So that's really, I think, uh, the role VMware wants to play. How do you make enterprise applications be tenants on top of a telco cloud? Okay, yeah, that that, that, that makes sense. Um, is there another, you know, maybe example that makes that real for people? I mean, the, the, the video conferencing example is a great one because you take that sort of office environment and move it to a different location. Um, what, uh, Let's any, take any other... Right? Uh, examples there? Go ahead. Sure. I mean, for example, uh, VDI, virtual desktops, right? So you right. are used to, uh, virtual desktops are great for enterprises because then they can put in their security, put pre-program all their applications and workers also enjoy it because they don't have to worry about installing software on whatever device they want to use, right? But virtual right. desktop, if you think about it, is high definition video coming down because you want because you want a high resolution screen and very low latency interactivity going up because you want your keystroke to be immediately reflected you want your mouse stroke to be immediately reflected so that's what 5g is built for right very high bandwidth right. down and low latency interaction up i mean that's that's as good a use case as you can get for enterprise 5g absolutely and this is um this is the this is the Maybe the first year that I would agree that that uh, that that type of application is even is even possible because we've been talking about remote networked computers and that sort of thing um, for the longest time, and so this is uh, yeah that does get to be exciting because yeah that latency is is actually um, the the key there uh, you know the, the like you said the keystrokes the reaction time it's all got to be it's all got to feel real time or that whole thing doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, people, humans notice the slightest jitter, right, on these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and we are so used to things responding so fast. I mean, that's why we keep upgrading our laptops every year. So how do you keep making sure that you get that same interactive experience? And I think uh, with, because of COVID, 
everyone wants such an experience from wherever they are because they're forced to work from uh, outside the office now so i think it's it's a perfect moment as you said with covid with for the 5g transformation and with the desire for telcos also to find new ways to monetize their 5g investment because it's no longer feasible right. to invest the amount they need to invest to upgrade networks if it's just going to be an unlimited data bundle yeah and the enterprise uh you know is is definitely going to i think take advantage of the 5g network in a way that 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 maybe they haven't um you know in previous wireless generations um, well, Sachin, thanks so much for uh, for for taking the time and and walking me through some of this uh, uh, information about the cloudification of the RAN. Uh, uh, I, I do appreciate it, and thank you all for watching this uh, Telecom Innovator video. Thank you, Phil. 